Hi guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous. I'm talking, it is an over the top beautiful August day. It is, what is it? August 11th, 2023 in the hottest summer of the planet. It is 73 degrees. We are in downtown, uh, downtown uh, Candor, New York, 73 degrees. I just spent $73 on a tank of gas. Anyway, what the hell happened to a tank of gas? I have been awake, guys, for 30 hours, getting a little punch drunk, as they say. So anyway, uh, one thing, as I was uh, tossing and turning uh, last night, uh, going through my comments to to Andy the gardener's takedown of these uh, anybody, of course, what he would say is a clueless moron believing in UFOs or space aliens. So anyway, <clears throat> what came from that is during that rant. <coughs> And I'm not going to talk about me being abducted by space aliens for 22 years. That is not going to be the subject of this rant. The subject of this rant is, and, and, and it's not a rant, it's just a story. I know that I have told this story at least once. I think I have told it twice, maybe three times. But once again, uh, since Andy the Gardener and several others of you are acting like you've never heard me tell the story about when I lived in a haunted house uh, in Cottage Grove, Oregon, uh, which is like 20 miles south of Eugene, Oregon, when I lived in a haunted house for, uh, I was in that house for two years for, uh, when was I in that house? I think 1992 and 1993. But anyway, this is a long story, and uh, I notice my brand new batteries keep cogging out, so if this battery conks out, I guess I'll just come back with part two. Hopefully I can get this in. So anyway, I bought this uh, run-down dump uh, in... Uh, in... 1992 <clears throat> the place was called the old gypsy house as this people all the locals referred to it as the old gypsy house it had been on the market for four years four years this place it was a 1700 square foot farmhouse on five acres with 700 feet of Willamette River frontage, four years at $33,000. <coughs> so a sucker's born every minute. So I take on the challenge of buying the old gypsy house and I immediately rechristened the uh, old gypsy house into Chateau Fiasco on Aikenback Acres, Chateau Fiasco on Aikenback Acres, where I had my big, beautiful organic garden and cornfield and all that. So anyway, this house, uh, according to the local historian, uh, the, the, you know, the old ladies, and uh, apparently this house, to the best of people's knowledge, was built in 1882, this old wood frame <coughs> farmhouse it used to sit up on the hillside uh, it was in two pieces there was a two-story half and then a one-story half with like a seam in the middle somewhere along the way they literally went up and basically sawed the 1700 square foot house in half dragged it down the hill and set it up right down beside the road. It's, it was on Highway 99, actually in Saginaw, uh, or Oregon. You can find this place on Google Earth. It's not that hard to find the house I'm talking about on Highway 99, about a mile south of Saginaw, uh, Oregon, on the west side of the road. So anyway, 
I take on uh, the challenge uh, uh, of the Chateau Fiasco, move in there and get to work. And this is my story and I'm sticking to it. So when I first moved in, I was having a problem with bees in my well house, back behind the house, that I had a, a bunch of honeybees back there. They were not happy with me back there in the well house. So I called the local beekeeper to come catch the, you know, the bees and put them in a hive. You know what I'm saying? So the beekeeper comes out there, this, uh, this tough looking redneck, he comes driving up. I've been in this house like two days. And, uh, and, and he pulls up in the driveway and he won't even turn his engine off. He won't get out of the truck. He won't, uh, he will not turn his engine off. So I go out there and go, what the fuck, dude? And, 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 and he says to me, please tell me you did not buy this house. And I said, yeah, you're looking, uh, you know, I'm sure I made some self-effacing uh, remark about a fool being born every minute. And, uh, and he goes, if I had known what house this was, I never would have driven up here. And, I, I, and I'm thinking, oh boy. I, I said, dude, you know, I don't know what's going on. I said, what is your problem with this house? And he said, sometime years before, he had been called out to that house, to the old gypsy house, to get some bees out of the attic. There is this very steep, narrow, spooky stairwell that led up to the attic. <coughs> so he goes up there to get the bees out of the attic. Uh, and uh, he said... He goes, I opened that attic door, and he goes, man, he goes, something hit me. Something hit me full in the chest, knocked me backwards. I almost broke both my legs getting down uh, those stairs and out of that house. He goes, that is the most evil presence I have ever felt in, in, in my life. And, and, you know, he was telling me that I went, it was in for a load of shit and he, and he won't even get out of his truck. And I'm saying, dude, and I'm rolling my eyes. It, you know, I'm giving him no doubt the Andy the Gardener. I, I'm talking to a blathering idiot uh, thinking that, that some fucking monster in the attic uh, knocked him down the stairs. And I said, dude, the fucking bees are not even in the house. They're in the well house. You don't even need to go in the house. I said, come on, brother, please. And he goes, I'm going to get these bees out of this well house. Don't you ever call me again. So he takes care of the bees. So I'm guessing I had been in that house for about two weeks. Uh, I was living there. It was me and my dog, Merle, my German short hair pointer named Merle. So what this house was, the two-story side was where the four bedrooms were. So downstairs were two bedrooms and upstairs were two bedrooms and a small bathroom with a toilet and shower. So with a <coughs> narrow hall between the two downstairs bedrooms and then the and, and then the stairwell leading up to the attic. So, Merle liked to get out and go outside during the night and stuff. So, so I took residence in the front bedroom, and I set Merle up in the back first floor bedroom. So he was Merle was right across the hall from me. His bedroom door was four feet from my bedroom door, and then he had a back door that led out to the backyard, okay, which was fenced in so he could get up and pee during the night or whatever. So anyway, 
uh, that was the setup. He seemed happy. I was happy. We settle in there. I'm figuring I've been there about two weeks. So, what I had done for Merle, right next to the back door, leading outside of the house in his bedroom, was a two-gallon bucket of water that I just kept by the, uh, that I kept by the back door. Okay, his bedroom, I am pretty sure uh, that both of our bedrooms were 12 by 16 feet. So you got to picture a two gallon bucket of water, which weighs what, 16 pounds, uh, sitting by the back door and it was in the very northeast corner of a 12 by 16 bedroom. The bedroom door leading out to the hall into my bedroom into the attic stairs was in the diagonally opposite corner. It was in the southwest corner. And the other thing about this old house, it had 10 foot ceilings. Uh, as these old houses do, these cool old 10-foot ceilings, eight feet up the 10-foot ceiling along, what would that be, the west wall of the house, you know, opposite of Merle's water bucket. Eight feet up in the air was the shelf where, you know, people would store shit, you know, to keep, to keep shit away from the kids and stuff. Eight feet in the fucking air. Uh, whatever A squared plus B squared equals C squared, however many feet from one corner, the diagonally farthest corner, eight feet up in the air is the shelf. Okay, so I'm hoping you're picturing this, obviously. It would help if I could diagram this. I probably should have done this, uh, you, you know, drawing this out for you. So I go to bed one night. You know, I, I get Merle all set up for the night. Uh, he had an old couch that he slept on. So Merle, I, I settle Merle in for the night. I go to bed. I usually go to bed around midnight. I don't know what time it was. Good God, this was 1992. So I go to bed, and at some point in the middle of the night, I heard this major fucking crash. I mean this fucking crash. You know, I was, I was sound asleep. I mean, it jolted me awake. I didn't know what the fuck had happened. It's two o'clock in the fucking morning, probably. I, I was exhausted, and I said, motherfucker, what goddamn disaster am I going to deal with? I go back to sleep without checking out what happened. Uh, th th it's not unusual uh, for shit like, you know, shit like this follows me around. I, I You know, something had obviously fallen somewhere. Obviously, something had fucking fallen uh, maybe a rat had knocked something off. So anyway, I get up the next morning, guys, and I open my bedroom door three feet from Merle's bedroom door at the bottom of those steep attic, that steep attic staircase. So are you follow me? And I open up the fucking door and the whole fucking hall is flooded. I mean, just flooded. And, and I, I went, motherfucker, because there was this upstairs bathroom and Chateau Fiasco that I had, you know, I had, I had just turned the plumbing back on and I said, motherfucker, this has something to do with that noise I heard. And I didn't know oh, what the fuck, but the shower, the fucking toilet, obviously the plumbing in that upstairs bathroom was fucked. And I was getting ready to deal with some class A horse shit. And I went, motherfucker. So I reached, the, you know, to go check in with Merle, I opened his bedroom door 
right across from mine and the door pulls out towards me when I pulled that door open there was a crash from above on the shelf there was nothing on that shelf never put anything on that shelf that was an empty shelf what it was was Merle's empty water bucket well, it was hung up on that shelf in the door somehow uh, so when I opened the door it dislodged the now empty overturned two gallon bucket and it came crashing down at my feet and I went mother fucker and, and I'm looking over there sick you know at the opposite corner of the goddamn room where there was a 16 pound bucket of water sitting on that fucking opposite corner of that room on the floor when I went to bed the night before and and Merle was absolutely fucking terrified and and and, and this dog he was a badass motherfucker you know what I'm saying uh, he was this badass German short-haired pointer bird dog Merle uh, it was not a little chicken shit he was the most fucking terrified uh, that I had ever seen him and, 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 and I'm and I'm looking at this and I said okay at some point during the night a 16 pound bucket of water launched itself from the floor went flying through the air across a room landed on the opposite corner of the room eight feet in the fucking air and I just said mother fucker and then of course uh, that dude uh, that beekeeper voice came back to uh to fucking haunt me and, and i felt myself just with this absolutely dejected sinking feeling and, and uh you know and, and i tried to calm merle down and i just sat there on that fucking sofa and i uh, you know just putting my fucking face in my hands going ham bone you have fucked up what in the fuck have you done with your life buying this fucking place I sat there right there on that fucking couch and I said out into the air I said dude I, I mean I didn't know I, I, I had no idea if, if this goddamn thing uh, was male or female I didn't even know if it was a human I you, you know the 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 well I mean the beekeeper didn't you know he didn't even use the word ghost uh, I just sat there on that uh, fucking couch and I said dude I said I don't know who you are I said I want you to understand that I have bought this house and I have no truck with you brother I just was assuming I was talking to a male spirit. I don't know why. I, I, I said, I have no, as we say down south, no truck with you. I, I said, we, you know, the old Rodney King thing, we have just got to get along. And that was two weeks after I bought that house uh, in the spring of 92. So, what I would do in, uh, on November 1st each year, I would leave Oregon and go down to Costa Rica for five months. I would rent my house out for five months, and I would go down to Costa Rica and, and live off the rental income from renting out the house. That's what paid for my trip to Costa Rica. So, I remember... So now I'd been in the house about four months, no more problems. I, oh, yeah, so I named this dude Harvey. You, you know, I think Harvey, wasn't Harvey that some sort of giant invisible rabbit that uh, Jimmy Stewart kept seeing in some movie? So uh, I had named him uh, Harvey, 
no problem with Harvey. So it, so I'm renting the house out, and these two lesbians come by to rent the house. And I'm showing them the house, and we go up the attic stairs to the upper bedroom. And this uh, woman looks at me, and she says, you know there is a ghost in this house, surely. <laughs> and I kind of laughed. I said, well, now that you mention it, uh, now that you mention it, uh, I was going to get around to that uh, at some point. And she had one question about that fucking ghost. Is the ghost male or female? And I said, lady, I don't even know if it is a ghost. I don't know if it's a human, if it's male, female, or what it is. So what it was is what's called a poltergeist, if you look up. It wasn't even a ghost. It was what's known as a poltergeist, is what these things are. Uh, and so she goes, so you don't know if it's male or female. I said, I have no idea. So because I could not assure her that it was a female post poltergeist, they did not rent the house. If it had been a female poltergeist, but they were not going to live in that house with any angry testosterone floating around that house. So anyway, I rented out the, you know, the dude who uh, rented it from me for uh, for five months. I, you know, he knew all about the fucking, it was just a buddy of mine. He knew the fucking story I just told. Uh, you know, uh, he just like everybody else just looked at me and, and rolled their eyes like uh, Hambone is a fucking uh, lunatic. And he never heard from the goddamn ghost that winter for five months. So I come back in May of 93 and I spend the next summer never hear from Harvey again. But you know, I, I what I used to do is, uh, you know, I flip houses so I would buy houses and sell them every two years. So I put the house up for sale you know, so I to you know to avoid capital gains taxes, and I made a, a, a and I made a pile of money on the fucking place. So who I sell this house to, guys, is this badass fucking Mormon. This Mormon. I I, I mean this dude. Just I mean this arrogant uh, prick. Mormon with his big old monster truck, with his gun racks, with his rifles in the back of his truck and shit. I never knew where his wife was never mentioned. So he had these two little girls, his, they, you know, obviously the lights of his life. He had, they were cute little girls, that he had these two little girls and obviously he had sole custody. It was none of my business. He never mentioned where, the, 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 what happened to this little girl's mother. So when I sold him that house, you know, I was a realtor uh, working at Better Homes and Gardens uh, Real Estate. So I am what's called king of disclosure, uh, that I disclose everything uh, uh, about this house. So obviously Chateau Fiasco was being sold in as is condition while this guy was some sort of contractor, home remodeler anyway. So he was looking for a Chateau Fiasco. Uh, so obviously he was buying the house in as is condition, but I made an entirely separate, an entirely separate one page disclosure and uh, in the middle of my disclosure statement, there was one paragraph in this, and, and it said something uh, pretty close to, uh, buyer understands this house is haunted by a poltergeist. 
you know, and seller to be held harmless if uh, this, you know, basically if the guy got run out of the house by the ghost, he, he could not come back on me uh, claiming that I did not disclose that he was buying a fucking haunted house. And obviously, you, you should have seen, I, I mean, this guy gave me the fucking Andy the Gardener treatment about, about space aliens. Uh, it, it was the funniest goddamn thing. I need to go park this dog in the shade. It was the funniest goddamn thing that he had ever read. He, uh... And, uh... I, I, and, and obviously he had no problem signing it because there were no such thing in his reality as poltergeist or haunted houses. Did not exist in his reality. Did not exist any more than they exist in Andy the Gardener's reality. I sell that dude that house. I head off to Costa Rica for five months. I leave in November. I come back. Uh, in the spring, now the spring of 1994, and I wanted to, you know, obviously I wanted to drop by the house and, you know, see what the guy had done. He was talking about uh, all of these big plans he had for Chateau Fiasco and how beautiful he was going to bring this uh, rusty jewel back, you know, all of this. So I drive up. And something is already weird. That the house is obviously vacant. You know the the grass all overgrown. Uh, there was clearly nobody living in that house. And so I go up the front stairs and I go to knock on the door. And when I knocked on the door, the door just swung open. Not only was the door not closed, tightly, it, it, not only was it not locked, it was not even closed tightly. And I step inside, and I might as well have been in the middle of the fucking Bermuda Triangle, guys. Uh, this dude, there were probably, I don't know, thousands of dollars worth of power tools lying around this house. There were building materials everywhere, thousands of fucking dollars. Uh, you know, he was in the middle of a major construction project. This motherfucker, it's like fucking space aliens came and, and, and fucking kidnapped him uh, in, in the middle of the fucking night. And I'm thinking, what the fuck? It, 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 it is going on here. I mean, it was spooky. I know what these Bermuda Triangle people feel like going on to these ghost ships where the, the fucking dinner is on the table. Uh, you know, whoever was in that house, they left in a serious fucking hurry. So, obviously, I have to go next door and talk to my buddy Jerry at the uh, at the cabinet shop next door. So I walk up and Jerry comes out of his fucking door it just kind of kind of smiling and shaking his head and uh, and hadn't seen the man in five months. We had had no communication in five months and I walk up to him and I said, okay brother give me the fucking story. And he goes, Hambone, you know the story. Harvey. And I said, you're fucking kidding me. I said, what happened? And he said, well, the guy moved in. He'd been there. He moved in and, he, you know, in November, uh, he brought all of this fucking shit in there and all of this pounding and sawing and everything going on uh, uh, for the two or three weeks. And what happened, according to the Mormon guy, who I never, I have, I've never talked to the Mormon guy directly. This was coming from Jerry. Jerry's story, what happened was what the Mormon dude 
had done is that he probably might have heard of Kohler plumbing fixtures. I'm at Habitat for Humanity. So what this dude had done is he had changed out in the downstairs bathroom, he had changed out the uh, bathroom fixtures. They spent it, you know, we changed out the, the, the bathtub and the uh, sink. So he put on these, these overbuilt uh, Kohler top of the line plumbing fixtures uh, in, in the downstairs bathroom. So he goes to bed that night. He, he puts his little girls to sleep. He goes to bed. In the middle of the night, he hears the fucking water running in the bathroom. He gets up in the middle of the fucking night, walks in there. The fucking bathtub is, is running full force. The, the sink, all of this fucking water pouring out. And I don't know what was going through his head. So what he did is he, you know, he very tightly turned off all of the fixtures going, motherfucker, what is this? He goes back in his bedroom. Fifteen minutes later, all the fucking faucets are, uh, are, are running. Uh, are, are running full force uh, in, in that fucking bathroom. So what that man did, the, the, this, this badass, gun-toting, right-wing fucking Mormon with the Andy the Gardener attitude about the paranormal, he was a fucking believer. He grabbed his little, uh, you know, he grabbed his little precious uh, planet nibblers, threw them in the truck, and Jerry said, thank God uh, he had the wherewithal, you know, to shut off the water main uh, outside of the house on his way out. He sped out of there in the middle of the fucking night with his two kids in that truck, vowing he was never going to set foot in that fucking house again. Uh, he didn't give a fuck. Uh, how many thousands of dollars worth of shit that he had left there. This badass motherfucker was never going to set foot in that fucking house again. And, uh, I, and then I heard through the grapevine, uh, years later, he ended up blowing his fucking brains out, I guess, with one of his rifles. Uh, so anyway, so he sold the house to, uh, to, to some other clueless moron, this family. And now I don't know whether he made a disclosure statement that they were buying a haunted house. I don't know. So this next family moves in and I have no idea... I, I didn't get any particulars from them, you know, I just, I just met them briefly and, uh, you know, and, and went up there and said, you know, I used to own this house, blah, 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 and you know, I was waiting for them, to, you know, I, I, I didn't want to scare them off, so I said, so, uh, how do you find living in this house, uh, is it an adventure? And, he, and they go, yeah, it's an adventure. Uh, we, we have somebody living in this house with us. And, and uh, I said, really? I said, who's that? And they said, we call him Harvey. <laughs> we call him Harvey. And we just, we, we have just made Harvey part of the family. Uh, we, we've told Harvey you know, apparently they had the same conversation with Harvey that I had with Harvey, and they said, fuck it, uh, they're not getting run out of that house by that ghost, and they just made him part of the fucking family, and that was, good lord, about 10 years ago, 
I uh, it was the last time I checked in. Uh, last time I was in Oregon, whatever year that was, probably eight or nine years ago. So that is my story, and I'm sticking to it. And I want to hear Andy the gardener's response to this. Okay, Andy, it's all yours, brother. A 16-pound bucket of water flying across a 16-foot room to land on a shelf eight feet off the ground. Something in the middle of the night going into a bathroom, turning on all the water fixtures, not once, but twice. I'm not going to say anything else about the beekeeper uh, or the lesbians or the new family. Uh, so just in this small circle, there's five people. Now, the lesbians probably did believe in ghosts. Uh, you know what I'm saying. But uh, and, and, and the hilarious thing about this is, you know, to this day, when other people tell me similar stories about their haunted house, guess what? I don't believe a fucking word coming out of their mouths. I, you know, I, I, I give them the same look that, that, that I would get when I would tell this story to uh, any rationalist who has no room in their reality for the supernatural or the paranormal or whatever. Uh, they, they have no room for it. Uh, I, I get this, this look. I, I usually get like a three, like maybe a three-time dashboard chihuahua nod of the head and this blank expression and then they change the fucking subject and they never bring it up again and this is exactly uh, what I do when uh, somebody tells me a, a, a similar story. They're fucking whack jobs. There has to be an explanation. So Andy the Gardener, I want your explanation and anybody else who wants to weigh in on this, what is the fucking explanation of this story? Uh, I, am, I am all ears. As they say, as people who experience paranormal phenomenon, uh, it, it, you know, I, I have the same response. I don't give a flying fuck. What Andy, I mean, I'm curious what Andy and anybody else says, but you know what I'm saying. On one level, I don't give a fuck, Andy, what your fucking rationalist uh, response to this story is. I don't give a fuck. It happened to me. And it happened to this Mormon guy. Uh, you know, I have met five people. Uh, it, it, and as far as I know, the, that Harvey is still living there to this day. I wish I remembered the uh, address. Of the, it, it, it's Highway 99 on Sagan, in, in Saginaw, Oregon. What you do is you go on Google Earth, look up Saginaw, Oregon. You'll see Saginaw, which is this little, basically a lumber mill. Then you'll see Cottage Grove the northern end of Cottage Grove, about three miles from the southern part of Saginaw. So you go about a mile south of, uh, you go about a mile south of Saginaw. So you're probably at this point, maybe a mile and a half, two miles north of Cottage Grove. And what you'll see on the east side of Highway 99 is the Willamette River and the railroad tracks. So there's nothing over there. So all of the houses are, are west of the road. So what you want to look for is very carefully go down the street where it goes around, a, it starts around a, a gentle curve and what you're going to see pretty much right up next to the road, you're going to see two 
well, I don't know what there, what's there now, but uh, what you would see, and there might be something new in addition there, you're, you're going to see two buildings uh, right kind of next to each other with a, with a gravel driveway cutting between them. And the, the building on the right is Jerry's uh, cabinet shop. The house on the left of that gravel driveway uh, is a Chateau Fiasco or the old Gypsy house or Harvey's place, whatever you want to call it. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. I, I, I would love to hear, as they say, anyone who wants to weigh in on this, but I really don't give a fuck. It happened to me, brother. It did not happen to you. It didn't fucking happen to you. Anyway, it is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times, and uh, I am at Habitat for Humanity, and I need to head out to see what I can score today. I'm thinking about uh, putting hardwood floors in my tiny houses. I'm thinking of ripping the carpet out and putting in hardwood floors. Wouldn't that be beautiful? So that's the what I'm working on. Anyway, get out there and enjoy your paranormal experiences while you still can. Bye, guys.